So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my presentation from printer to pwn, leveraging multifunction printers during penetration testing. A little bit about myself, my name's Daryl Hyland. I also go by the handle uh, percent X. Uh, I live from in the Dayton, Ohio area. I've been in IT for about 18 years. 10 of those in security and uh, three of those as a pen tester. I'm a member of the Fusa and S team. You, you guys are pretty sad. <laughs> okay, I've been, uh, this is my third time speaking at DEF CON and uh, this is always fun. I always have a ball being here. So let's go ahead and get started. I do have a guy showing up with a 50 foot because I don't know if anyone's seen me speak before, but tether me on a five foot rope can be dangerous. Uh, so uh, the agenda for today's presentation is uh, multifunction printer features. We're going to quickly go over some of the features and functions you typically see in multifunction printers that we want to uh, attack or steal information from. Second, we have a, a single one slide on multifunction printer security. Uh, from there, we're going to go to attacking multifunction printer devices and leveraging those attacks during penetration testing. And at the end, we'll go ahead and conclude with uh, development of an automated harvesting tool. Okay, I guess we can get started again. So let's go ahead and move into this. Uh, let's start off by talking about multifunction printer features. Uh, don't like that happening. There we go. Okay, um, I don't know how many people have actually logged onto the web interface on a multifunction printer, uh, but that's generally what we're going to be talking about today. And there's a wealth of features and functions that can be pulled, information can be pulled out of that. Uh, an example here is scan the file functionality. The ability to walk up to that multifunction printer and scan data uh, or scan something and actually have it store it on a uh, Microsoft file server or on a FTP server. Also scan the email, the ability to scan stuff and have it go out in email. So these have to be able to integrate into those services, SMTP server, uh, SMB authentication onto Windows devices, such, such stuff like that. Also one big one is LDAP authentication. To be able to go up to that device, authenticate yourself to that printer, and then have that printer give you specific features or functions associated directly with you. Uh, also system logs. A lot of us overlook uh, what kind of information that exists in system logs on these devices, and it could be a wealth of information. Uh, an example would be uh, Color printers a lot of times have chargeback functions, so they have to be able to log who's actually using the printer. So a lot of times it'll log usernames. That can be stripped off these printers and used. And of course, uh, remote functionality uh, with the new cloud concepts coming out there, we're seeing more and more stuff roll into this area. So that's an interesting one. And of course, uh, backup and cloning, the ability to back up the entire configuration on the device. So if an attacker can pull the backup and cloning information and then strip it apart offline, he can pull all that information in one fell swoop. So the next thing I want to get into is multifunction printer security. So we have one slide, four steps to security failure on a multifunction device. Pretty straightforward. What do we do? We roll these things in, we power them up. We integrate these into the business system so they connect to our SMTP, they connect to our Microsoft Active Directory environment, they connect to FTP servers, and then the third thing, what do we do? We set no passwords on these, or we leave them at the factory default password settings. So I have a question for you. So we can qualify this, so quantify this. How many people in here 
Their company requires you to set a complex password on all multi multifunction printers that are deployed within your organization. So raise your hands. So everyone else, look around the room. That's probably the typical amount that I see. Nobody is doing this. And of course, the last one on this list is no patch management. So if there is a bug or vulnerability that exists in these printers, we're not putting patches on these to fix those problems. So let's roll into the fun stuff, attacking multifunction printer devices. So why do we want to attack multifunction printer devices? Besides it being fun as hell. Basically to gather information as an attacker. We can gather this information and use it to escalate our rights into other core systems within your environment. So when are we going to typically do this? An example would be uh, if you expose it to the internet. And I know everyone's thinking, why would anyone expose a printer to the internet? Well, go out to Google when you get a chance and, and type in there and try to pull out some printer information and you'll find there's literally thousands, hundreds and thousands of printers out on the internet that are exposed out there. And probably half of them have no password set or default factory passwords. The other example is once somebody gains a foothold into your environment, whether it's an internal user, a disgruntled employee, or an external attacker who has gained access to your environment. Earlier this year, I was on uh, Paul.com, uh, episode 237, we were talking about this. And Paul made a real interesting point about this, and that is the fact that this vector falls underneath the radar screen. No one's monitoring it paying attention to it, no one's logging or doing any auditing against anyone querying information from your printer. It's totally ignored. So if an attacker gets a foothold, he can query your printers well below the radar screen through the web interface and potentially pull information that he could use to log on to your Active Directory environment without anyone ever knowing. So it's a, a real concern. So how are we going to do this? Uh, obviously leveraging default passwords to get into the printer to start with. We've seen all the hands that were raised, so we know that uh, no one's changing these passwords. Uh, second is access bypass attacks, and that's an attack against a printer where they have set a password, but you found a way to bypass all the security on the device and gain access to that printer. Uh, third one, information leakages. Once we gain access to that printer, how do we extract some of that data? Do these printers leak that information? Uh, fourth one on there, forceful browsing. If you know what the URL you want to get access to, forget about the password you need to get to it with. You just enter that URL and the printer gives you access. And of course, backup and cloning functions. The ability to pull all those backups or clones offline and uh, pull the information out of those. And the last one on here is a passback attack. Uh, typically to be able to trick that printer into sending the information to you. Uh, we're going to go into some detail in that toward the end of this presentation. So the first one I want to talk about is the bypass attack. This is the ability to bypass the authentication on the device by passing various forms of data in the actual URL. We've got two examples we're going to show today, and that's the Toshiba and an HP. So on the Toshiba, if you look at this URL, uh, this would give us access to the scan the file configuration page on that printer. If you enter this URL in, um, the Toshiba is going to take you or redirect you to a logon page. If you happen to know the default password, which is? No, it's 123456. Okay, so that's the default password. So you know what it is for all the eStudio Toshibas. Okay. <laughs> Should be easy for you to remember then. Okay, uh, so if they've actually changed the password, how do we get into this device? Well, there's a little trick with this particular device. I don't know if you've noticed there. It's an extra slash. Put the extra slash in between top access and administrator, and so goes your security, and now you're into the configuration page. So the second example, and this is um, an HP Office Jet, or Office, uh, jet device. Um, a lot of you guys probably have these sitting in your home right now. Uh, the reason why I mention this is it's a really good example of a bypass attack 
Plus, uh, as a pen tester, I've been noticing a large number of these showing up on corporate networks. They're small devices, less than a couple hundred dollars, and we find them actually be used in managers' offices so they don't have to walk down the hallway to get their print job or do little copies and scan stuff, and they're cheap. So if you actually try to get to a fax address book on one of these devices and authentication has been enabled, it's going to prompt you uh, to log on. So we have a little demo where we can actually show this taking place. So if we go up to the setting part of this and we click on setting and authentication is required, it's actually going to prompt you for a username and password. And this is my printer and I actually forgot the password like years ago. Um, so you go ahead and hit cancel and you get to the URL up here where the actual fax address is at. And what you do is you actually copy it and you paste it back in there. So we actually have what says page equals, page equals fax address book one. By adding that extra uh, page equals, we can bypass the security and get to the configurations on the device. So the next area we want to delve into is information leakage. Now that we've gained access to a device because of default passwords or for by, by bypassing the actual security on the device, how can we pull information from this device? So the first one we're going to look at is information leakage on an HP um, device. This is a gig I did uh, here, it's probably about a year and a half ago. Turned out they had actually exposed this printer to the internet. Uh, and besides uh, stealing all their faxes off the device, uh, as you notice that uh, the email settings on this points to one of the employees that's taking care of the device's Gmail account. So as an attacker, it would be really nice if you could get the password for their Gmail account because then you could use it to carry out other attacks against them or social engineering attacks. So when you look down here and you look at the password and you see all those black dots, a lot of us go, oh, our password's protected. Well, that's not always the case, especially when we're dealing with embedded devices like multifunction printers. So the big thing here is if you have Firefox, you can right-click on that field and go show properties. If we expand that up, we see that it is basically a plain text password in there. So the next device we move on to is the Toshiba. So if we know the password or, in the case of Toshiba, bypass the actual password, on the device, uh, and we want to go to the SMB settings on this device, the Samba settings, and take a close look at what we have up there. I mean, really close look. We have it set up to log on to the domain, and guess what the logon name is? Administrator. So wouldn't it be sweet if we right-clicked on that and we got the password? <laughs> pretty much game over at that point. And remember, this is all underneath the radar screen. No one ever knows. You're not generating any noise. You're just logging on with a web browser to a printer, right-clicking and viewing the source. And now this device has given up your domain admin password. So the next one I want to move on to is forceful browsing attacks. Basically, with a forceful browsing attack, it's the concept of if you know the URL that you want to get to, in spite of the security of the device, you just type in the URL and you go to it. 